I am deeply honored. Gary Davis issued an honorary world passport to a former representative in the Brazilian Congress, Mario Giruna, chief of the Chavantes tribe of the Amazon. This passport symbolizes the one world in which we live. The one nature in which we live. And the one nature which we must protect. I think there's a major uh, significance between uh, world citizenship and the environment. After all, we are the people who are living on this world, despoiling it, and uh, if we're going to uh, prevent that, then we have to recognize that we all are contributors to the despoiling of the environment. And if we all felt that we were really world citizens, we'd be concerned about the environment in our own area and elsewhere in the world, we'd have a lot better place to live if we were all citizens of one is. world. See, that's, the one world has already taken shape, but our minds have not taken shape. Our minds, minds are don't, go, uh, lagging behind. Our mind, exactly. Our minds are back in the 18th century. The Earth Summit is to give rec recognition to a new politics, a global politics which meets our problems. The problems of the environment have nothing to do with the nations. National leaders can't do anything about it. Brazil can't do anything about the ozone layer or the polluting of the forests. I mean, the raining of the rainforests or whatever. No nations can, can cope with these problems. These are global problems. I'm talking about the legitimization of a social contract. I'm talking about law. Now, where does law come from? It comes from you and me. It comes from that exercise of individual sovereignty. It's you saying that you are going to act in a state of peace with me and me agreeing. That's a contract. And that's what sovereignty means. And that's the essence of citizenship. That's what citizenship means. But national citizenship is an oxymoron today because you can't put national in front of citizen when you have anarchy outside the nation because then the citizen becomes a subject. We continue to hide behind that monster which is this which is a suicidal pact called nationalism. Einstein called it the measles of humanity. You know what it is? It's the cancer of humanity. If the United Nations could do anything, they first of all, the first thing they would do would be to stop war. But since the United Nations was founded, there's been 75 wars. And who fought those wars? Members of the United Na members of the United Nations. And what do wars do? Wars pollute. The greatest polluters are armies of the world. And every member, every member state of the United Nations has an army and a navy and an air force and frontiers. No, the United Nations is a, is a smokescreen. The United Nations perpetuates a condition of war. If you want to know about the United Nations, here is a graph. This is the military. Each each one of those blocks is a billion dollars. A billion dollars, each block. This graph, all these blocks represent one trillion dollars, a thousand billion. That is the military budget next year of the nations. And the United Nations is up there talking about the environment. And they're planning to do this? Why don't they talk about getting rid of this military budget and put this military budget into solving problems of the environment? Because all the problems that we face can be solved by a quarter of this. Of this. See, so we have to wake up, you know. The truth is that we're one human family, whether we like it or not. I don't care whether your skin is black, just because your mother's skin is black. My mother's skin was white, so what? Your heart's beating, your red's blood, your I mean, you know, you have to eat, you have to be loved, you have to make love, you have to go to bed at night, you get up in the morning full of the same energy I have, etc. What's the difference between you and me? Nothing, really. No essential difference. We're brothers. <laughs> or we're cousins or we're family or whatever you want to call it. That's the reality, you see.
conditioned to overlook the obvious. And uh, then we become whites and blacks and Jews and Christians and Muslims. We divide ourselves, in other words. And all the teachers from time immemorial have tried to eliminate that duality. So wait a minute, that's not the reality. The reality is that you are part of the cosmos. Everything in you is out there. And you're all related. There's a brotherhood here. The thing of having respect for your fellow man and respect for anything, all living things, and I also think respect for all things that are created in, um, in beauty and not destroying these things, I think these are all a part of what's going, what is going to slowly move into this next civilization. And it's why I, I wish everyone could know about this world citizenship. The boundaries between nations are no more than little red lines on a map. And sooner or later, because of communications and other modern means of transportation, we'll have to recognize that we have just one world and nation states will be a thing of the past. Was the Rio gathering then just another hopeful yet powerless meeting? Or was it a turning point in human history? Was humanity intelligent enough to recognize its total relation to its earthly mother? Certainly the Earth Summit and Global Forum marked a time for global approaches to problems that expose national frontiers as obsolete and even deadly. It marked a time also for the singular voice of world citizenship and world government to rise from the ashes of war and desolation. The counterpart to the unsaid nation-state summit was the citizen summit at the Global Forum. After claiming that only world law could cope with world ecological problems, Davis concluded with a final appeal to the individual participants. If you want to solve the ecological problems which are global, you have to claim global citizenship. They cannot be solved by the nations. They can only be solved by a global institution which addresses those problems because the ecology is global. So we have the decisions to make, but they cannot be made unless you make them. And what the first decision you have to make is to exercise your right to choose your own political allegiance on the global level. There are principles involved here and we're all part of this. This is the meaning of our summit, and this is what we have to realize if we're serious about resolving ecological problems.